one that's not here yes you can get, catch the replay so i i feel i think uh, we are a bit not organized that's why maybe we are like missing out on this hey man like the the big the big thing here is that like as soon as i saw a couple live transfers not get picked up that's why i think separates us from everyone else like you know other other companies just be like ah oh, they didn't pick up live transfers we tend to follow the zillow model where we're more like you got to pick up your phone because what want you to win. So not only do we want you to pick up your phone, I know that if we follow these scripts and we go like, as we go through these things today, I know that if we do these things that we will be booking four to seven in-person meetings. Those are just the stats. Like those are like the team stats from across the country. Um, I have a really large team we're working with out of, um, um, out of Washington as well. And I have, like, we have work with a bunch of large teams and, uh, they have one point guy who is setting 60 to 70% of his live transfers are going to in-person meetings. And out of those six to seven, you know, we're, we're, we should be getting, if you meet with some, four to seven people in person, you should be able to get one to three contracts. Yes. Like, you, like you just should, like, those are just the stats. Like, yes. so there are people in your database right now that like, we have to get into contract. We have to explain our value. We have to get in front of them. They have bad information. Um, you know, the fundamental core belief is all conversion happens in conversation. And so many agents are playing the lazy game right now where they're like, ah, oh, you know, I'll wait for somebody to come to me. You know, I'll meet with them when they're ready. It's like, that's why you're broke. You're yes. broke because you're waiting for people to come to you. Yes. That's not how sales works. Sales that's doesn't work that way. Like, yes. so what I, I'm really excited to chat with your team today about uh, ways to open people up. Cause I like, I listen to your live transfer calls. I listen to client, like client live transfer calls, uh, especially with my large teams. I listen to some of their calls and I'm like, okay, I know we're, we're not booking in-person meetings. And as I walk through these uh, things, like the half the battle is we just got to ask. Like that's half the battle. We're not asking. So yeah. half the battle is we have to ask. The other half of the battle is we can't trigger sales resistance. And so I'll give you an example. So as we wait for, um, uh, wait for the rest of your team to join, I was on a call the other day. Uh, sorry, I was listening to a call the other day with a with an agent we were doing a trial for, and I dropped the live transfer call in the in the channel. And this per, the like this part of the reason we're doing trials as well now, where we're like, okay, you're just not a fit for what we're doing. Yes, drop the live transfer call in the um, in the channel, give her feedback, and she's like, yeah, that was a shitty lead. I'm like, no, it wasn't a shitty lead. You triggered resist sales resistance in the prospect. Yes. The prospect said his most important criteria right now is finding the home that he wants to get into. Yes. You kept talking about the sale of his home. That wasn't important to him. The yes. aspirational focus of buying was important to him. You yes. triggered sales resistance. He hung up on you because of what you said and the where you put the focus of attention on the conversation. Yes. Had you put the focus of, con of attention on the conversation that find him the home that he's looking for, maybe he would have trusted you because yeah. every agent they get on the, they get, they get commission breath where they get on the phone with somebody like, Oh, you have a home. Let me come see your home. It's like, like, it's like, that's not important. Selling like Sharon says this all the time. Selling is operational. Yes. Buying is aspirational. Okay. Okay. So if you can get your agents to remember that, where it's like, it's like, if somebody like, so Sharon, me and Sharon just had a conversation. He, he recorded a video about this uh, recently. So he, they had an $11 million listing in uh, Laguna beach uh, yeah. with, with one of his real agents and the, in, um, in the conversation uh, they won the listing immediately because when they walked in the listing, they didn't walk the listing. They didn't approach it a normal way. They sat down, they created a, what they did, what we call the game plan frame. Um, they did the game plan frame and they, they talked about the aspiration of finding the, a home in um, I think, I forget what area they were finding, but they, they put the, the selling conversation all yeah. about the buying conversation. Okay. And it's like, and like that, like when you flip that in your set, even in your selling conversations where it's like you, you flip it from operational to aspirational. It's like, it's like, okay. So if I can get you this, if I can find you this home at this price, if I can find you the terms you want, the price you want, you, you will move. Well, yeah, Sunil, of course I'll move. Like that's the, this is the home I'm looking for. Yeah. Okay. 
So if I find you that, it's like, so here's how we get you there. We do, we do this, we do this, we do this. You know, we get you the home you want at the price you want with the terms you want. We do, we, the, this is our five-step game plan on how we get this, how we actually do this. Cool. And they went the list, they went the listing like that because the buyer, the seller was not, didn't like the, the most important focus was not the sale of the home. The most important focus was the buying and getting into what they want. And that's why like, um, a lot of people get tripped up with our scripts where they're like, well, it's only buying. It's like, well, just flip the wording. The, yeah. the wording is like, has anyone taken the time to walk you through the top three things you need to consider in order to win in the market when you're ready to sell? Yes. Sell, buy, it doesn't matter. The, the script is exactly the same. Like whether you're talking to a seller, whether you're talking to a buyer, the reason we, we start with the buying conversation versus the selling conversation is buying's aspirational, selling's operational. So no one generally starts a, a selling conversation without first starting a buying conversation. So that's generally when we're, even when we're talking to a seller, we're like, okay, you want to sell your home, but like, let's talk about your aspirational focus of like, what do you want? Like, what does perfect look like to you in a perfect world? Where would you want to be? So we call that a hypothetical question. And I'm yeah. going to get into this. Are we still waiting for people? Or do you want to just hop into this? I, I think we can start because it's okay. 10, five. It's, this is recorded. So yes, I'm going to share my screen. There's in order to have, oh, can you give me screen share access, Sidil? Yeah. So, um, so I should uh, share my screen? No, can you, uh, 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 it's disabled for, I'm going to share my screen. Yeah. Okay, just let me see. I know it used to be, but how? Let me check. Should be in the settings there. Or if you make me a co-host as well, um, that's probably the easier way to um, make me a co-host. Uh, that's probably the easier way to give me screen share access. So uh, automatically now to record. Okay, yeah, there you go. You can, now, now, now you are the host. Amazing, now I can go, okay. So, a successful live transfer sales conversation has three phases to it. So uh, you can see my screen. All right. Yes, we can. Okay. So a success, in my opinion, after listening to hundreds and like, you know, now thousands of live transfer calls, there's three phases to the live transfer conversation. And there's three phases that I would, me and Sharon have worked on um, to essentially really understand and really dig deep into like what it is the buyer, what it is the seller wants to do. So there's a lot of like scripts out there that just don't work and they make me vomit. Like they just don't work. Like the, like human psychology, um, you know, like the, the there's a script uh, out there that me and Sean were having a conversation the other day. I'm like, that triggers sales resistance immediately. So when, when, a, when uh, one of your team members gets a live transfer call, one of the most effective live transfer, and I'll share this in your Slack, I'll get somebody to share this in your Slack channel, an example of a good live transfer call if I, we haven't already. Um, but there's three phases to an effective live transfer call. The first phase is what we call chunk up, chunk down. So it's like, it's a, it's a, it's a way that makes it really easy for the prospect to answer for the, for the agent to go deeper. So there's obviously different elements to chunk up, chunk down that I want to walk you through. And, and it's not like, this doesn't happen overnight. It's not like, oh yeah, chunk up, chunk down. Like this is something you need to practice and role play every single day with your team about okay. how to ask what we call sorting questions, Okay. how to be curious and how to dig deep. So okay. one of the mistakes I see a lot of agents make when they take live transfer calls is they stay surface level. Okay. If you stay surface level with the prospect, you get surface level results. I'm going to yeah. say that one more time. If you say surface level with the prospect, you get surface level results. Okay. So chunk up, chunk down. What it does is it allows you to build a relationship with the prospect in an easy way. So, it, uh, so we always start with sorting questions. So say, for example, you get that live transfer call. Martina's on the phone with you. It's like, hey, we have, a, we're, this, we have Tom on the phone. He's looking for a two bedroom, three bathroom home. He has a budget of 900,000. Uh, he wants a big backyard. Just as an example, you know, Tom, are you with me? Sunil, are you with me? Awesome. Sunil takes over the phone. Okay. How do I start the conversation? I start it with a sorting question. I, oh, the reason I start it with a sorting question is it allows me to go, uh, it allows me to go narrow 
and then it allows me to go deep. So a sorted okay. question might be something like this. So say, for example, you, you hear Martina say, hey, it's important in the big backyard. Okay, um, Tom, like, if you don't mind me asking, so we call that a permission-based question. So the reason we ask permission-based questions is that it, alle uh, it alleviates sales resistance immediately. So it drops the guard of the prospect because they're like, okay, so Neil asked me for permission to ask this question. So permission-based question, we go to sorting. Okay, so Neil, if you don't mind me asking, would you know, would that big backyard be the most important criteria, or would you say your home being closer to a, like a, a neighborhood or, or a school? Like what, like in a perfect world, what's more important? What I'm doing is I'm sorting them and I'm trying to figure out what that most important criteria is, and I'm, I'm making it very easy for them to answer. So I might say, you know, in a perfect world, so I use that a lot when I'm talking to people. In a perfect world, we call that a hypothetical question because what I'm trying to get them to do is I'm trying to. I'm trying to the, I'm trying to do everything I possibly can in that first, you know, 30 seconds of the call to get them to drop sales resistance because even though you're not they're not buying anything, their guard their 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 guard is immediately up because they don't know who you are. They've just spent 4 or 5 minutes building a relationship with this call center agent and now they're transferred to another person to have to build rapport. So yeah. the best way that your agents can continue the rapport building is to is to drop off is to is to continue the conversation based on what the agent told them during that live transfer handoff so if you heard big backyard i might say in a perfect world would a big backyard or a home close to be the school be the most important and then i'm going to shut the hell up and i'm going to listen one of the biggest mistakes that agents make is they talk about themselves yeah the prospect doesn't give a crap about you they yeah. want, they have a dream desire that they're looking to, uh, to get to. We just need to stop. We need to listen. And then what I'm going to do, so we call that, call that a sorting question. It could be, a sorting question could be anything. You know, if you don't mind me asking, uh, you know, permission-based question, would you be looking for a, like a house or a condo? Like what, like what's most important? Like that, that's an example of a sorting question. The reason I want to start with the sorting question is because I want to make it really easy for the prospect to answer my question. And I want to sort them and I want to figure out what they're doing. And for the most part, we're generally good at that. Where we struggle, where all agents struggle is what we call chunking down. So chunking up is like literally a sorting question. Chunking down is, okay, Tom, like, if you don't mind me asking, like, why is being close to that school important to you and your family? It's the digging deep. It's the figuring out family, figuring out finance, like, you know, figuring out work environment for, I'll give you an example. I was listening to a live transfer call the other day with a client out of St. Catharines and a gentleman said um, on the phone, he had a home, a uh, pretty decent budget, but he wanted to downsize. And uh, you know, he had mentioned that uh, it would, you know, getting, uh, getting, being close to his uh, daughter was something super important. And the agent failed to ask the question, why? Like, if you don't know why, you don't, you don't have any information. Yeah. So that's why chunking down is so important where it's like the question I would ask, like, as I listen back to the call and as we, we listen back to the, the replay, she's like, Oh, I missed the, I missed the why question. I'm like, yeah. And now like you have no rapport with the person. So asking for the meeting is weird. Like you have yeah. no rapport with them. It's weird. Where like, if you were to get to a point where you, you sort them in the beginning and we call this chunk up, chunk down. That's the phase one of the conversation. And we sort them and we say, if you don't mind me asking, like, why is that important? Like, so for example, what I said to her, I said, like, we need to ask the question, why is it so important that we downsize? Well, I want to be closer to my, uh, to my daughter. Oh, like, if you don't mind me asking, like, what does your daughter do for a living? Like, what, like, why is it important that you need to be close to your daughter? There's clearly something there. We just haven't uncovered okay. where, where the pain is. There, mm -hmm. There's, there's, for the most part, like the reason why people say leads or prospects suck or this prospect isn't great is that they just don't know anything about the prospect. Yeah. And, and I have the calls to listen back to where I'm like, you don't know anything about them. You don't know where they work. You don't know anything about their family situation. You don't know anything about their, about, you know, why it's important. They need to move. Like why, like, like even asking a simple question, he, the, the prospect on the phone, for example, said, we just have too much room. What does that mean? Okay. Like, what, what does too much room mean? Like, because for everyone, it's different. Oh, maybe it's like, maybe it's like we have three floors. Okay, well, we're not going to set them up on a search list for a three-floor home that's smaller because he just told me that three floors is, is too much room. 
Yes. You know, it's like, we need to understand more depth before we go to the game plan frame. It's where, you know, so the, the big thing inside of what we call chunk up, chunk down, there's, th there's three things, intent, listening, deeper questions, but it, it, everything can be really boiled down to this guys. Just ask the question, why? If you ask the question, why I'm telling you, you will get, you will create more depth of relationship faster. And, the, and what ends up happening is like, you know, your deeper questions create deeper levels of relationship and your surface level questions create surface level results. We don't want surface level results. We want depth of relationship with every single person we speak with. All conversion happens in conversation. The next element of, of effective live transfers is tonality. So when I listen to um, live transfer calls, I ask people the question, like, how do you think you sounded? Oh, I think it sounded okay. It's like, yeah, like, but okay, it's not going to get you results. Like, you know, like how, so there are four, um, there are four types of tone or type of cadence that when you're on a live transfer call, I would encourage you to work on with your agents. The first, honestly, the first one, if you can get all your agents to just be more curious about the end consumer and, and re like, I know everyone cares, but if you, like, there's a difference between, between caring about somebody and being curious. So if you can master the curious tone, like, so generally what I'll do, like, so my presentation tone is different than when I'm like speaking with somebody, when I, what I have a hard time with tone sometimes. So I have to, I have a trigger word in my head that allows me to flip my tone. So I always say this, like, you know, Sunil, I'm just really curious. And I actually use the word curious a lot. And the reason I do that is because it flips my tone. Okay. I'm just really curious, Neil. Like when you said that the big backyard was something that was super important, why exactly is that important to you and your family? Did you see the drop in tone? Yes. And how how nat like how um, you know it's like it, it it feels like I actually care. And curious tone feels like um, exemplifies that you care. So the curious tone, the concern tone. So if somebody says like, Hey, I want to be close to my, closer to my daughter. Oh, you know, like when you, you know, Sunil, when you said you were, you want to be closer to your daughter, I, mean, I just want to understand like, what, like, why is that really important that, that we find a home close to your daughter? Concern tone, concern yeah. and curious. And that's where empathy comes in. When you use the curious and the concern tone, empath empathy will come in, empathy for the understanding. Uh, puzzle tone, we'll, we would get into that at a later, but these tones, curious, concern, and empathy help reduce resistance in the prospect because it's really difficult for us to even get to the game plan frame if we don't first understand the basic fundamentals of, um, of you know, digging deep, chunk up, chunk down. The third element is mirroring. So like when we're in that discovery phase portion of the conversation, the third phase is when a prospect says they're concerned or they're stressed or they're worried, it's very, very simple. All you're going to do is you're going to repeat back that one emotional word and you'll see them immediately open up. So say, for example, a prospect says, you know, I'm just really concerned about the, the, in, the interest rates right now. Con Sunil, concerned? They're going to, and then they're going to open up and they're going to tell you what they're concerned about. Okay. I'm really stressed about the market right now, the inventory rates, like whatever they're, they're, you know, stressed, you know, stressed, stressed. You're going to immediately see them open up. Mirroring is a great way to actually get them to go deeper with you. Yes. And just even asking the question, like when you say you're stressed, I'm just like, even if I were to like put that into a sentence, like, so now when you say you're stressed, if you don't mind me asking, like what, like what, what stresses you out about the current market right now? Okay. And then you're going to, then they're going to tell you how they're actually feeling, which then like, you know, which then allows me to go into the game plan frame. So we're gonna, I'm gonna shift gears here. I'm gonna go into the game plan frame. So this, this script here I'm telling you, so the stats that you guys should be tracking weekly. So like I would, from the team, be getting how many live transfer calls. So looking at your stats weekly and saying, okay, if I got 20 live transfer calls and 15 were successful, yeah, I should have eight to 10 in-person meetings. Yes. So the stats we're looking for, the stat, the stats our top agents are, are producing right now is out of 10 live transfers, 
four to seven should go to an in-person meeting. Yes. And you should see one to three closings or one to three contracts out of those four to seven in-person meetings. So there's an element of tracking on the back end that Sunil, I would encourage you to sit down with your leadership team weekly and say, okay, we had 20, we had 10, we had 10 live transfers this week, 10 successful, 10. We spoke to 10 people this week. Out of those 10 people, agents, did we get at least four to seven in-person meetings? If not, then we needed to do some work and we need to figure out what happened. And even you saying, hey, can I listen to these last couple of calls and figure out like what, where is the gap happening? Because the gap is not with the prospect. The gap is in what we're saying. Because we're just, we're not saying we're not using the game plan frame right now. So I'm telling you guys, if you use this script and I would use this script, even with not just the live transfers, I'm telling you, if you do, if you do, like, we have a lot of clients that use the, the, the three-step phase. So when you, you know, when you get through the portion of the discovery, so we call it chunk up, chunk down, there's a transitionary period that a lot of people like, you know, they might ask you questions and they'd be like, Hey, I'll follow up with you within uh, a couple of weeks hear me, never leave a meeting, never leave a call without scheduling another meeting. Never leave a call without scheduling a follow-up meeting. You will lose the prospect. Never leave a call without scheduling a follow-up meeting in person, over the phone, over Zoom. Never leave a meeting without scheduling a follow-up meeting. There was a stat that they recently published for every week that somebody doesn't make a decision. They forget certain elements of, I think it's by like, 15%. Uh, there's a reason I stat published where it's like every, every week that goes by, they forget the information you gave them by 15%. So people were just forgetful people. Yes. So the transitionary period that allows us to go from the, uh, to go from like, I've heard, th this is where the mistake happens is I've heard a lot of people just go right into this out of the live transfer call and it doesn't work. Like you, you're, you're going to have a really high no-show rate because you haven't built any rapport with the prospect. So that's why you need to build rapport. That's why I always say start with chunk up, chunk down, and then move into the game plan frame. So, uh, Cody, I I, uh, I have a question yeah. for you. So in the like game plan frame, where there's a question like, has anyone taken the time to walk you through the three most important things you need to consider yeah. in order to win? Um, so if we have to uh, like flip it for the, for the pre-construction client, we can say that has anyone uh, taken the time to walk you through the three most important things you should you need to consider in order to buy a pre-construction home or, or condo? Yeah, think, exactly. Makes, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Has anyone taken the time to walk you through the, th the top three things you need to consider in order to win in the pre-construction market when you're ready to buy? Okay. Like I'm just like you're just adding in your. So I actually heard something real. Uh, I heard um, I heard a really great transition the other. Today. So I, we have a client out of Ottawa and he like, you know, again, like the, the purpose of this portion of the script, like you can't ask for the meet, the meeting makes no sense unless you set the context for the meeting. Yeah. So that's why I always say like, you have to go to the, 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 that we call the pre-frame to the asking for the meeting. So you could say something like this, like Sunil, has anyone, like, if you don't mind really me asking, has anyone taken the time to walk you through the top three things you need to consider in order to win in the pre-construction market, specifically here in Toronto? Yeah. That like where the market has been a little bit volatile over the last couple of years and interest rates and inventory and all those things that kind of have gone like into, uh, into the factor of whether people buy home, like, has anyone taken the time to walk you through the three most important things when you are ready to buy? And 99% of the time they're going to say no, because like, just for the most part, people, the conversation is like, Oh, great. Awesome. Call me whenever, like the real estate agents say, call me whenever you're ready to buy it. And like, it just like, our goal is to get them from phone to in-person meeting. So you just say pre-construction, um, just add that when you're ready to buy pre-construction. And then what you're going to say is, why don't we set up a time to meet in person for a cup of coffee at like, let's say here on Ontario. And before the coffee gets cold, we can create a game plan around the three most important principles that you, to ensure that you're able to make an informed, intelligent decision when you are ready to buy it. Would weekdays or weekends work better for you, Sunil? One other thing I want to mention as well, is um, try to get your agents to use the the prospect's first name as much as you possibly can, because yeah. that built that uh, when you hear your when you hear your name, it breeds familiarity. So I try when I'm on calls, I try to use people's names as much as I possibly can because it it drops it helps drop sales resistance and and breeds familiarity. So when I say like you know 
Sunil, has anyone taken the time to walk you through the three most important things that you need to consider uh, in order to win in the market, in the pre-construction market when you're ready to buy? And like, it's important that your, your, um, your agents understand ums and ahs are okay. We're not in presentation mode. Okay. So even like slowing down, like one of the biggest mistakes I see a lot of uh, agents make, and because generally they, they hear me in presentation mode, they don't hear me actually on the phone, but slowing things down. Like Sunil, has anyone uh, taken the time to walk you through the three most important things that you need to consider in, in order to win in the pre-construction market when you're ready to buy? wait for the response. And then we, the, the next portion of the game plan frame is why don't we, so that, why don't we set up a time to meet a uh, person for a cup of coffee at here in Ontario before the coffee gets cold, we'll create a game plan, uh, help you make an informed and intelligent decision when you're ready to buy. So if your agents, all your real agents really need to memorize is this, if they can memorize this, they will get to the, they will get to the three to four in-person meetings at a 10 live transfers. If they really master chunk up, chunk down, they'll be at six or seven. Okay. If they get really good, they're going to be at eight or nine. Like we have a client out of Ottawa who's like really, really good. Uh, he does like, he does 80 to 90% of his live transfer calls go to in-person meeting. So, uh, so uh, like, uh, does this happen that clients say, you know what? Yeah, you can tell me the, all the three important things on the phone. I, I don't, I, I like don't have the time for the meeting. You're, you're going to get that, but like you're, you're going to get objections, but the chances of you getting the objection, uh, yeah. like if they say like, you know, it, uh, if they say, can you tell me the three most important things? I would be like, you know, Sunil, uh, like hundred percent, like we could even potentially do a zoom meeting if yeah. like, you know, like I, I would try to push them to a zoom meeting. It's like, I, I want to like, I would say, Hey, I want to make sure that you have the right information. And everyone's information is a little bit different. Everyone, you know, like your, um, your needs might be a little different than, you know, my, uh, you know, other clients needs, but I do this for my top clients. If you even say like, you know, like, um, you know, I do this for my top clients. They're like, oh, I, like people have this feeling of status where it's like, hey, what I do for my top clients is I sit down with them to talk to them about the, you know, the top three things, you know, I want to educate them about the market no pressure to buy anything. Like, you know, like we're just going to sit down for a cup of coffee. We're going to chat about the market. And then what you're, the, the beautiful thing about meeting with people in person is then you have the ability to ask for another introduction. So you, when you're going to educate them. So the, the whole idea of the game plan frame is to meet more people. Like your agents just aren't meeting enough, like uh, agents across the board. We're just not meeting enough people throughout our day to day. So when we meet with somebody we don't know, and we educate them on the market, we then have the ability to ask them for an introduction to somebody that we don't know. So in that meeting at the very end, if, either, if they're like, hey, you know, like if they, if they, if they decide that in their, in, in their specific circumstance, hey, this is, you know, Sunil, this is not the right time for me based on everything you told me. Sunil, totally understand, like totally understand. Now, like, obviously you found the information, you know, useful today. Uh, so, you know, would, would you happen to know anyone else that might be, you know, looking for this type of information? Uh, would you mind making an email introduction for me? People don't like giving referrals, but they're very happy giving an introduction. You know, I'm on a mission to help more homeowners get the right information for them. And like, you're not ready today. That's totally like, that's totally okay. That's the whole idea of this conversation. They sit down, figure out whether you're ready or not. But then I have the ability to ask for another an introduction because now I've led with value. So if we can get the agents not only meet with people in person, I'll tell you a story really quickly here because I think that this is a so um, um, first time home buyer. Uh, we have a client met with a first time home buyer. Uh, it was daughter. Daughter asked. Uh, da came through an ad. Daughter asked, um, "Is it okay if I bring my dad to the uh, to the meeting?" And uh, that, you know, we sit down and just guys, uh, the, you know, generally that when dad shows up, that's kind of scary um, for most agents, but uh, he's like, the agent's like, yeah, no problem. Like bring dad. That's totally cool. Um, he ended up sitting down talking about interest rates, talking about, you know, when's the best time to get in the market, listening. Dad ended up being a CEO for a really large company. 
23 year old first time home buyer. We've all heard these conversations. 23 year old first time home buyer. Dad's a CEO for a company. Dad has a had a has a a first time home buyer doesn't make a decision right today. But dad has like dad's so impressed with this agent ends up listing his his vacation property with the agent. So like that's the thing. Like you know, it's like, that's why I say like all conversion happens in conversation. Like, we need to meet with everyone. Like if a person's willing to meet with us, we should meet with them because we have no clue. Massive opportunity, home on the lake, list the property. And now they're working on a massive land deal together. That came from a first time home buyer. Like this happens day in and day out. We've all had these conversations, but the game plan frame gets us in the door. And one of the, the last thing I want to kind of close out with here is like, how to ask for the meeting. So a lot of people, like some of our clients have said like, okay, I asked for the meeting. Um, you know, how do I tie it down? How do I get them to actually show up to the meeting? This is what I call the tie down. So ask for the meeting. So uh, I said this earlier, never leave a meeting without setting a follow-up meeting. You know, asking would mornings or afternoons work better? Is the Starbucks on here in Ontario close for you? Awesome, it is. Okay, how about we do 3 p.m. on Friday? Amazing. Now, before I let you go, are you a drip coffee or a latte kind of person? Now, what I'm doing is I'm tying them down because I'm saying, awesome. And then ask them like, oh, what type of vanilla, uh, what type of latte? Oh, I drink vanilla latte. Amazing. What I'm going to do for you, Sunil, is I'm going to have a vanilla latte ready for you. My treat on Friday, you know, again, that, you know, want to thank you for the opportunity to even sit down with you, kind of chat with you about the market. I'll have a vanilla latte ready to go for you uh, at, uh, at 3 p.m. I'm going to send over a calendar invite for you too. Really looking forward to chatting with you. And what I'm doing is I'm tying them down with reciprocity. I'm buying the coffee. The coffee's on me. That increases their likelihood of showing up to the meeting. I've asked them a good question. I'm going to have a vanilla latte ready. If I don't, if I no show that meeting, I'm going to feel very guilty about the fact that Sunil bought a $5 latte, even though it's five bucks. Like who wouldn't pay $5 to get a potential 10, $20,000 commission? Yes. I would take that. Yes. I would take that all day. Five bucks, six bucks for a latte, you know, for a 10, $20,000. That's how you tie them down at the end. Cause I had uh, an agent asked me the other day, they're like, well, what if they no show? Like, it's like, well, here's, here's the tie down. This is how you tie them down. Are you a drip coffee or latte kind of person? Oh, I'm a, I drink, you know, I generally like lattes or I'm, I'm not familiar. Oh, like, you know, they have frappuccinos. They have like, you know, in a perfect world, hypothetical, what would you have? Oh, I would have a frappuccino. Okay. Amazing. I'll have a frappuccino ready for you at Friday at 3 PM. My treat. I just want to, you know, say thank you for the opportunity to even have the, have the conversation. Send over a calendar invite. Look forward to seeing you then. Okay. Three phases, three steps, going through them, high-level overview, chunk up, chunk down, sorting questions, curiosity, dig deep, the game plan frame, why don't we so that, has anyone taken the time to talk you to the top three things, ask for the meeting, tie it down. Those are the three phases to a lot, an effective live transfer handoff to how to get them to in-person meeting. And then, Sunil, back-end tracking, you yeah. should be holding your agents accountable for every 10 live transfers that they receive live on the phone four to seven should be going to in-person meeting. Those are just the stats. Those are the, those are the, those are the top, those are the industry stats from all the agents, the hundreds of agents we work with across the, um, across North America, four to seven, we should be in that range of four to seven in-person meeting. That's where you're going to essentially tap into the money that's in your database. So I want to see if you guys have any questions, see if I can provide any value anywhere else. Um, I know you have the re recording, you have the scripts, uh, already, uh, yeah, I want to see if I can answer any questions specifically that you guys are facing. So, uh, Cody, can you like uh, send us that uh, file that you were like showing that the, like uh, hundred percent? Yeah, hundred percent. I will flip that over to you. I'll throw that right in your Slack channel for you um, with the with the three phases. And I'm going to be recording some video content around it as well because like you guys aren't like you know like other agents have been asking for that. Like, what are the what are the how are top agents and through like viewing, listening to live transfer calls, I've kind of bo boiled it down to three steps, chunk up, chunk down, game plan frame, tie it down. If you do those three things and think of it, not as in script, think of it as a framework. Here's yeah. the framework for my call, chunk up, chunk down, game plan frame, tie it down. If you can just like, if you can remember that going into your calls, they will be so much more effective 
And half the battle is asking for the meaning, but it's how we ask for the meaning that gets us the result. Surface level questions get us surface level results. Yeah. Depth, deep questions get us depth of relationship. Yes. Well, uh, like, like uh, basically, I think we are getting like a like lot of leads every year, almost more than uh, 10,000 leads every year. Yeah. And like, we are not like closing enough. And I, I, I think that is because the, conver the, the quality conversations are not there. We are not asking yeah. a, lot, like, a lot of questions from the client. We just ask which building you want, which unit you want, yes or no, and then we just like leave. That's not how it should be. But yeah. I would like, like leave it up to you if you guys have any like question. Uh, like when we are uh, sorting down the client, like mm -hmm. and objection, something, something like say example, high interest rate, how do we handle that? High interest so it's yeah, like, high interest rate. It's like you know, like the the you know the high interest rate is the conversation. Like I've heard it, I've heard the, the that objection overcome in so many different ways. It's like you, I think the first I'll send you guys some training that uh, Sharon did on on how to overcome that. Uh, I'll throw it in the in the Slack channel uh, for you um, that you can go through. But like, it's you you have to ask the questions like you have to figure out how they're tracking the market. Yeah. Just like coming back at them with like, you know, information, you have to understand it's like, you know, like, it's like, what would a good, uh, you know, it's like interest rates are at, you know, six, 7% right now. What, it, what, what is a good interest rate look like to you? Yeah. The, the client doesn't know. They don't know how to answer the question. Yes. Like, they, like you know, it's like, it, it's like, I don't know. Like, it's like, so even asking the question like of like, you know, the, the thing I, I always like to do is I like to take them to an in-person meeting because I would rather tackle that in, in person than on the phone. Yes. Or a Zoom meeting rather than the phone because I have to understand the context in which they're asking the question. Yes. So is the is the context is would would you rather pay a hundred thousand dollars over asking at a lower interest rate? Yeah. Or would you rather pay eighty thousand dollars under asking? With a higher interest rate, yes, that's a good one. We we understand this, you, like you 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 like we understand this, but it's how we phrase the question. It's like I have to understand first the context of which they're asking the question. I might say something like this, like Sunil, like if you don't mind me asking, like when you say interest rates, like you're concerned about interest rates, like you know, I'd love to go through that with you in, in person. Like that's the whole idea when we sit down. But like just so I understand. Uh, and I have clarity, like how, how are you tracking the market right now? And how are you tracking interest rates? Okay. And the 99% of agent of, uh, of people would be like, oh, I, 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 you know, whatever CNN tells me, whatever, whatever Fox news says, or whatever they're tr tracking interest rates based on what the media media is saying. But mm -hmm. we on the ground know the real statistics. We know what's actually happening. Yes. So uh, like a client can also come back saying, you know what, interest rates are so high and my like monthly uh, payments will be, will be so high that I can't afford. Mm -hmm. Then where do we go from there? Yeah. So, so just so I understand Sunil, when you say interest rates are, are high and you can't afford a monthly payment, what, like, you know, in a perfect world, what would your monthly payment be? Okay. So they'll say, uh, okay. Then they'll give you a number, yeah, <laughs> like, you know, like, and then uh, like probably based on that, we can also show them the lower price home where the that like matches with their payment. Hundred percent. Yeah, we're 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 in the business of finding solutions. Yes. If we can flip our our mentality from like you know just like it's like expecting them to come to me and flip our mindset towards like my job today is to find a solution. If I can find a solution, how I find solutions is I ask better questions because like they say, oh, interest rates are so expensive. I can't afford it. I'm priced out of the market. Oh, just so I understand, Sunil, like when you say you're priced out of the market, like what, like, you know, how much are you paying for rent currently if they're renting or how much is your current monthly mortgage? Like just understanding the context in which they, they see the market. Yes. I'm still going to sit down with them. Even if they tell me like, Hey, it's 25, like my, my, uh, my rent's $2,500 because I have a fundamental belief that we are 10 times more likely to get the client even in the future in a year, if we sit down with them in person and educate them on the market. So yes. I'm building my pipeline for the future. The reason I'm sitting down with everyone, I'm not just seeing them as a number in my database. 
Like think about even like how we as an agency operate, like Sunil, you and I have been like talking for like three years. Yes. Like we're now working together, yeah. but we met in, like we met virtually. Like yeah. we actually had, we built a relationship over years. It's like, if, if we can get everyone on the team to see the long-term game plan, of yeah. like business, if we plan to be in business five years, we will meet with everyone yeah. because I have no idea. Like, I like I don't even ask the question, like, you know, like th this is where it gets really, like really weird for me in, in the space that we're in because when an agent books an appointment and they wanna have a conversation with me about what we do for them, I don't ask them, hey, are you looking to buy my program in three to six months? That doesn't even come up in my conversation. It's like, it, it's just like, here's how the program works. Here's where you're currently at. Here's where we can help you. Here's how we can help you. Here's the investment. Okay, yeah. I got to think about it. It might take me a year. And then, you, you know, we work together in two, three years. And that's like, I just think fundamentally that's how good businesses are built. Yeah. So um, yeah, those three phases, chunk up, chunk down, game plan frame, tie it down, meet in person, 10 times more likely to get the client if we meet with them in person. Because I guarantee you, your, your competitors are not meeting with people in person. Guarantee yeah. you they're not. That's true. I think we'll get the text recording. Up to, yeah. So we will get the recording as well as the text. Oh, yeah. Awesome, guys. Any more? Any other questions? Or Rock on. Hey, man. Awesome. You guys have a great rest of your day. If there's anything else you need, reach out to us in Slack. I'll flip you over the notes that I went through with today. You guys have the recording. If you need anything, feel free to reach out. Uh, four to 10 out of 10 live transfers. I'm watching four to seven in-person meetings. Actually, sorry, Cody, uh, quick question. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> Hanging on the side here. Um, one question, um, I thought of even an um, objection is sometimes we'll get people on the phone. Uh, and just kind of say, oh no, we're just looking. We're not really doing. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they don't see value in us yet. So, mm -hmm. what would be kind of a way to kind of just get them talking, kind of open up? They're like a shell. How do we start kind of peeling away naturally? Yeah. So, like uh, hypothetical questions. Hypothetical opens people up. Where it's like, okay, like you know, like Sunil, like in a perfect world, if you don't mind me asking, hypothetical, permission based, in a perfect world, like what would your what would your home look like? Would it have two bedrooms? Would it have a sauna? Like, you know, like I want to open them up. I want to get them out of current reality into this hypothetical world that I've created for them that allows them to actually be more real, raw, and honest with me. That's why we say like sorting questions, sorting questions, like hypothetical sorting questions to dig deeper. Oh, when you said that it's, you know, like having a pool in the backyard is important. Like, you know, why, why is that pool important? Oh, I can see my kids running, like, you know, like I, I, I want, we eventually want to have kids and like, we want them to kind of experience summer. Oh, like, you know, when, when are you planning to have kids? Like, it just, it's, a, it's just like curiosity. Wow. Curiosity opens people up. And I think it's a, a lot of it has to do with how we add, ask questions like tonality. Um, but, you know, I'm just browsing, like the, everyone says that that's a canned response. Oh, I'm just browsing you know, like some shark is going to come along and ask great questions, going to get them to a meeting and they're going to, they're going to sell the home. We see this in our, in, in CRMs daily where it's like, oh, you know, I know I chatted with you six months ago, but you know, I spoke to this person and I actually bought this property here. It's like, I want to eliminate that. And the only way I eliminate that is asking good questions, getting the in-person meeting, getting them to like, you know, like at least then they have, they see a face. I, I like I hear agents say this to me all the time. It's like, if I can just get in front of more people, just have more belly to belly conversations, then I would close more. It's like, well, 100%. This, is how, this, this is how we have belly to belly conversations. We have to get good on the phone. And how we get good on the phone is we ask better questions. And how we open them up is hypothetical questions, permission based questions. So a lot, a lot of people are going to be skeptical, especially in this market. I try not to tackle objections on the phone because it just like it's, it, I find it creates too much sales resistance. Where I'm like, I try to go immediately. Like I, I, I answer questions, but I don't. I try not to tackle objections. Like my objection is like, hey, like you know, if it would be helpful, what I do for my top clients is, uh, you know, I sit down with them and I educate them on the market. You know, like it kind of, like I would even say like it kind of sounds like you're in your pre-planning phase right now, which is totally cool. Like in 
all of my top clients that I meet with in my, in the pre-planning phase, what I do for them is I sit down with them so that I can help when they are ready, I can help them make an informed and intelligent decision so that when they are ready to buy, they have all the right information because no one wants to make an uninformed and unintelligent decision. And how do we do that? We, uh, that's why I like, you know, a lot of times like Sharon will use what I, what I do for my top clients is they do this. So that's why like, you know, like, it's like, well, you know, Daniel says he does this for his top client. So why wouldn't he do it for me? So that's how I try to overcome objections where it's like, it's not really overcoming of the objection. It's more of like a, a repositioning the objection. I try to reposition. Yeah, try to understand where they're coming from and kind of redirect them where we want them to go. Sorry. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's just listening. It's like, you know, it's like, you know, like even like you hear when you hear an objection, don't be afraid to pause. Because I sometimes I have to pause and think about what I'm going to say. Oh, okay. Okay. When you say you're concerned about the marketplace, Neil, like what, what, like what, just help me understand, like what, what are you concerned? Like what, like what, where, where is the concern coming from? I just want to, I want to know. I want to, like, I want to dig deeper. I want to, like, I want to be able to make it, I want to be able to help them make an informed, intelligent decision, but I need to understand how they're tracking the market first. If I understand how they're tracking the market, then I can help them make an informed, intelligent decision. Because maybe they have, you know, how many people, like, you, you, we've had conversations about this. Like, so many people think that they need 20% down to buy a home. That's, that's, that's gospel because mom and dad or uncle Fred or uncle Tom says, this is gospel. The vast majority of people, especially in the Toronto market, where do they get their information? Where do they get their information? Friends and family. Friends and family said, this is gospel, but we know that that's not the truth. We know the tiered approach, but they don't understand that because mom and dad said, Hey, you need 20% down. Well, you know, that might be the case, but maybe that's not right for your situation right now. So just as an example, say I call, um, say, yeah. you're, so I'm quite, hey, Cody, so I'm here from Spark Realty. Uh, you signed up looking for some information on this. So yeah, I just wanted to reach out and see how we can help you out. Um, I, we've emailed you some information as well. And I'll kind of you jump in and say, oh, no, no, yeah, I got, I just wanted some floor plans, price this. Okay, I'm done. Thanks very much. Uh, I need to jump back in because I don't want you to take control. No, 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 no issue. Yeah, definitely. You can take a look, take your time whenever you're ready. I'm not sure. Are you an investor or a, you know, a homeowner? Are you looking to purchase? Because we do have other uh, projects as well. I may imagine. Like, how do I keep this going? Like, I, without it turning yeah. into a fight? Because <laughs> I'm not going to yeah. let go, right? Yeah. I don't want yeah, to. So, oh, this guy. So, I need to, you know. So number one, number one, drop the tone down to curiosity. Okay. okay. So like, you know, it's like rather than like, because like, I find the biggest thing is like, when I'm on the phone, my my um, my presentation mode is different than my my phone tone. So the first thing is like really watching your tone, okay. where it's like, oh, okay, okay, understand, understand. Like you know, like I, I I change the tonality in which I approach the conversation. So that first question you ask the client on that phone call should be a sorting question. Okay. So like you know, like versus like you know, like he, you hear you have all this information. It's like. I don't want to overwhelm them with information. I want to, I want to ask sorting questions to then dig deep where it's like, okay, like, so, you know, like we have these pre-construction units available. You mentioned that you're looking for this, this, it's the same script though. I would take them to, has anyone taken the time to walk you through the top three things? Like if I get stuck in a conversation and I don't know where to go, I go to game plan frame. I just, I will go immediately to game plan frame because the goal should be to get them to an in-person meeting. Has anyone taken the time to walk you through the top three things you need to consider in order to win in the market when you are ready to buy a pre-construction building or pre-construction condo or pre-construction? Well, no. That one like, thing so probably like double business just by saying that. <laughs> no, I really do because, think- Because, because that's the actually, answer is no. The answer 99% of the time is no because yeah, exactly. agents don't do it. Like, so like th this, is where the, this is where the magic is in that question. Has anyone done this for you? Well, like, Sunil, like, you know, what I do for my top clients is, you know, I sit down with them and I educate them on the market. So why don't we do this? Before the coffee gets cold, what I'll do is I'll walk you through the top three things you need to consider in order to win in the, specifically in the Toronto pre-construction market. And before the coffee gets cold, I'll walk you through everything you need to know so that we can make sure that when you are ready to buy, 
Um, and the reason I say when you are ready to buy, because I'm not like, I'm not like, you know, again, it's in there, the ball's in their court when you're ready to buy so that we can help you make an informed, intelligent decision. And then I sort them at the end. Would mornings or afternoons work better for you? I don't leave it open. I always want to sort them at the end. Oh, well, yeah, I guess like, you know, afternoons will work better. Okay. So how would like, you know, Friday, 3 PM, that sound good for you? Yeah. Friday, 3 PM works. Okay. Awesome. And then I tie them down with like, Starbucks here in Ontario, that, that's good for you? Yeah, yeah, Starbucks, okay, awesome. Are you a latte or like frappuccino, coffee kind of person? I'm like, what, what do you generally drink? And then I tie them down like with, with, the, uh, with the sorting of the, of the drinks and then, hey, I'll have this ready to go for you. So yeah, if you just, you, like, I'm telling you, like if you, you even when you're doing your cold calls um, uh, to, or your calls like yourself to past clients, like say, like what I would encourage everyone here to do, and I'll close out with this. What I would encourage everyone to do is if you want to double your production this year, call everyone in your sphere and just follow the game plan frame. And you'll double your production. Because what's going to happen is you're going to be like, hey, because a lot of people, like a lot of people don't call people in their sphere because they don't know what to say. So it's really simple. Hey, you know, like, hey, Tom, last time we chatted, you mentioned you were looking for a two bedroom, three bathroom home. You know, it was, you wanted it to be in, uh, in the downtown core. Um, I was having a conversation with one of my clients the other day, and we were just talking about, you know, everything that's happening currently in the marketplace. You know, I just, I'm curious, like, has anyone actually taken the time to walk you through the top three things you need to consider in order to win in the market when you're ready to buy? And that severe influence client or that we think his client was going to say no. And then you're going to book a in-person meeting with your sphere. Like it's the easiest way to get the coffee meeting. And the, the thing we say to all of our agents right now is the coffee meetings are creating the income. Okay. So, so sphere uh, of influence, coffee meetings create income. So, so like uh, Cody, I, I like yeah. have a question. So yep. uh, like uh, for the meeting, like uh, should we uh, try to have the meeting in the office at Starbucks or at the builder's place? So um, in the beginning, you, you're, you're not going to be great on the phone. Yes. Like, I'm going to give everyone a license to, to suck in the beginning. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, you're, you're not, like, not going to be good. It's just like I've, I've heard, listened to so many calls. You're just not going to be good. It's going to take practice. And that's why I'm going to say like, like if you guys can role play this daily, like, even 30 minutes of role play daily with each other in the office, um, I would do like Starbucks is more neutral. It's more of a neutral place for, or like Tim Hortons or wherever you go. It's a, it's a more of a neutral zone. It's more comfortable for the person that doesn't know who you are to go to. The office can be good once you get better on the phone and once you can learn how to tie people down. They're just more likely to show to a Starbucks or to a, a Tim Hortons than they are coming to the office. It's okay. totally up to you. Clients do both. Some clients do office, some clients do coffee shops. Like it's totally up to you, however you want to do it. So it's just like, just think about even like how you interact as a consumer, like where I'm like, I don't really know how to get into your office, like, you know, parking, all those things. Those are all things that are going through the mindset of the consumer. So maybe your office is super easy to get into. I don't know. I've never been. So you have to make that uh, educated, informed and educated decision. Oh, it is. You should come back. Yeah, I should. Yeah. Next time I'm back in Toronto, I totally will. <laughs> how do you take your yeah. <laughs> yeah how do you think <laughs> black you got it super easy super wow. easy with me black wow. coffee that's it yeah, that's, that's good dang. even i can get that right yeah sweet awesome guys um if there's anything you need let me know if there's anything i can do to provide value just let sydney all know uh i would highly encourage you guys to role play this script daily role play objections too like yeah. you know again like role you guys role play objections like our the top teams we advise from across the country they have an hour of role play every single morning Every morning they role play. Hey, I got this objection. How would you overcome it? Yep. I'm telling you, it'll take your business to new heights. We role play every day at 3.30. Like oh. our, our sales team, every day at 3.30, we role play. So it makes all the difference. If there's anything else you guys need, let me know. Um, I will flip that over once we hop off the call here. Sunil, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Perfect, you do. Thank you. We'll, we'll see you all soon. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. See you.